the seven billion people get a revelation that they have come from God, they have been designed by a maker, that they are not here by accident. You did not evolve from a guppy and you did not evolve from a monkey. You did not come on somebody, but you were designed by God and you have a destiny, you have a calling. And we are free. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back into our program, A Heart After God, where we want to bring God's heart into your home. Hey, I'm Pastor Josiah Silva, and I know that today God has a specific word for you. Hey listen, what we're about to listen and jump into is to a series that we began talking about, how God chose David. Did you know that God has chosen you? That it's not by coincidence, it's not by accident that you're alive at this time in history. I want you to think about this. God could have put you at any time in history, but He didn't. God could have put you when Jesus was walking, but He didn't. God could have put you when He was uh, letting the nation of Israel cross the Red Sea, but He didn't. God chose you to be alive at this time, but not by a coincidence and not by an accident, but on purpose. You see, God has chosen to choose you. Did you know that there's a purpose that God has for you? And when we look at the story of Goliath and we look at the story of how David took down Goliath, it was the story of God choosing a destiny for him. Listen, I believe that the Goliath thing that you're facing today is not by accident, but Goliath is not opposition, but it's an opportunity for you to step into the God-given destiny that he has for you. You know, the power of being chosen is not in the person who's chosen, but in the person who actually chooses. God chose you. That's an amazing thing. We're about to jump into the message where I'm going to share with you how God has chosen to choose you. And if you step into that, you'll see God do some amazing things. Let's jump into the message today of how God has chosen you. Grab your Bibles if you got them and let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And what we're looking at, we're going to read from verse number 12 through 16. And we've been looking at the biblical account of the life of David and Goliath where David fights Goliath and we're looking at it here. And going verse by verse, line by line, an expository teaching, and just really allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to us in a very unique way. Uh, if you've heard the story of David and Goliath before, or perhaps you're hearing it for the first time today, um, I believe God has given me some unique insight that will help us shed new light on these particular verses as we go through it. If you didn't get a message outline, lift your hand and the ushers will give that to you. Points to my message as well as the verses I'll be reading to you. Ushers will hand that to you. Just lift your hand high enough where they can see it. And uh, basically what I give you is I give you my outline. A lot of people actually uh, use this for Bible study. And I do recommend that what you get on Sunday, just revisit it throughout the week. Because hearing the word, the Bible says don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm a doer. Come on, somebody. That's right. I'm a doer, not just a hearer. Or as my wife likes to say, don't just... Don't just tell me. Your wife tells you that too? Awesome. Okay. Um, first Samuel. I'm just joking. All right. First Samuel chapter 17. And once you got it there, please stand to your feet. This is a custom in our church for the reading of God's word if you're physically able to. As we just honor the word of God in a generation that oftentimes overlooks God's word, we like to put an, an emphasis on honoring God's word. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 12 through 16. I'm going to read of the New International Version or NIV. And uh, you can follow with me there uh, in your notes or your Bible. Are you there? You're like, yep. Okay, here we go. Verse 12. I believe today is going to be something special. The Bible says, now David, someone say now David. He says, was the son of an Ephratite named Jesse who was from Bethlehem in Judah. It says Jesse had eight sons and in Saul's time he was very old. Essentially Jesse was up there in age. Verse 13 says Jesse's three older sons had followed Saul into the war, and the Bible says the firstborn Eliab, the second Aminadab, and the third Shammah. But watch verse 14. It says, now David was the youngest. Someone say David was the youngest. Was the youngest. He's the youngest of all these boys. It says the three oldest followed Saul. But verse 15, but David went back and forth from Saul to attend, to attend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Notice that David would go to help uh, Saul, but he would also go back to help his father. In other words, don't forget where you came from. Someone should say amen, all right? 16. It says, for the 40 days, now here's very important. I want you to notice this. For 40 days, the Philistine, which was Goliath, came forward. What does it say here? Every morning and evening, and he took his stand. Goliath would come out every morning and every evening, and he would take his stand against the armies of God. I want to talk to you today, part two, of what we're talking about now David. And I believe God is looking for some people in this generation who will take a stand. Because if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Let me pray for you. Bow your head. Father, I pray right now. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. 
This morning, I need your grace, God. This morning, I need your power to be able to communicate, Father. Every Sunday is unique, and today is definitely very unique, Lord. And I know many people in this room have had maybe a difficult week or a week that has its own, own struggles, Lord. But I pray that you would speak to us today, Holy Spirit, in only the way that you can through your word. In Jesus' name we pray, the church says, amen. Why don't you give God a clap and tell your neighbor, tell him your time is now and you may be seated. Go ahead and tell him that. Your time is now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Your time is now. Well, hey, we've been talking about this series on I Will Fight. And, you know, today I really believe, and it's not just a, you know, a Pentecostal hyper statement here. I really believe it's something special. There are different Sundays that I, I, I approach, and they're all unique in and of itself, but I really believe today God has a specific word for somebody. And I don't just, I'm not just saying this. Who, you're here for a reason. I mean that. You're here for a reason. And we've been looking at this biblical account of David fighting Goliath, and I've told you that David fighting Goliath is a picture of how the believer is often in a fight or a spiritual battle and to show us how to overcome the Goliath things that we face. Now, just so I know I'm talking to the right crowd, how many know that sometimes we face Goliath things? Come on, somebody. Hey, amen. We got some honest people in second service, all right? How many know we face some big things in life? And oftentimes, it's not that we are trying to go against it, but it comes against us. And I don't have to convince you that there are modern-day Goliaths. That Goliath, although David killed the physical body of Goliath 2,000 or thousands of years ago, more than 2,000, more like 4,000 years ago, the spirit of Goliath is still alive today. That the spirit of intimidation, the spirit of fear, the spirit of trying to intimidate God's people or trying to let God's people think that they can overcome what's in front of them is still alive today. I don't have to convince you that there's still modern-day Goliaths, but I do believe that what we need and what we need to build up and speak to is we do need modern-day Davids today. Somebody say amen. And if you're a female here, say, well, I'm not a, how could I be a David? No, don't worry about it. You can be a Davina. No, no, I didn't say a diva. I said a Davina. Come on. You're like, a diva? I already, no, 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 come on. I said a Davina, which in Espanol means, in Spanish means divine. Anyway, the Holy Spirit divine, okay? But you can be a Davina. And so, ladies, God, and men, men of God, God is looking for some modern-day Davids and some modern-day Davinas who Acts 13.22 says, and I found uh, my man, he found a servant named David, and he would do all my will, and he was a man after my own heart. God, and the only way we're going to defeat modern-day Goliaths is by becoming modern-day Davids who have a heart after God, come on, have a heart after the things of God, and are willing to do all his will. Somebody put an amen, give God a clap right now if you believe that in Jesus' name. Turn to two people and tell them, be a modern-day David or Davina. If they're a female, tell them that. Davina, Davina, Davina. And I believe that's what God is looking for today. And we're looking at the story of David and Goliath and, and how all of this is, is a picture for us today. Now, I told you this last week, and I'm just going to recap for a little bit to set the foreground and the context so that we can speak to today's message. For those that maybe today joined us for the first time or you're here last week, I know sometimes I like to recap just some highlights some things because how many know sometimes we can kind of maybe forget. Hallelujah. Anyway, so, okay, let's move on. And I told you last week, is, is I told you that the Christian life is not a playground, it's a battleground. It's not a playground, it's a battleground. Now, qualify the statement, I'm not saying that you can't enjoy life. I'm not saying like, you know, live in paranoia. Who's after me? No, chill out. <laughs> Tell two people, chill out. And I'm sure, <laughs> chill out. I'm not saying like, everybody's after me, pastor, all after me. No, no, no. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you know, Peter tells us, be sober-minded and be vigilant because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone who may devour. In other words, wake up. Realize that there is an enemy after your destiny and your legacy. That there is an enemy who is often trying to tempt you who is trying to put things in front of you so that you will, you will succumb to that and forfeit the will of God or the destiny God has for you for something that you will not give you the desire of your heart. And we need to walk through life, understand that life is a battleground, that there are things that are trying to come against your marriage, things that are trying to come against your children. Talk to me like we're living in, like you're alive this morning, right? There are things that are trying to come against your life that we need to realize life is not just a, a playground, all a bowl of cherry, and, huh, huh. No, we need to realize, come on somebody, the things we got to do. Now, I, I showed you in, in 1 Samuel 17 that it started with saying that, that now the Philistines gathered their armies against Israel. In other words, Israel never picked this fight. 
Israel was never like, like, let's go pick a fight, you know, with the Philistines. No, Israel was just loving the Lord. They were just raising their families in the ways of God. They, they were establishing their kingdom. They were just, you know, uh, building, you know, doing things for the Lord, just trying to live life. But the Philistines came against them. Have you figured out yet in your Christian walk that you don't have to look for opposition? The opposition comes to you. Have you realized yet that when you start, you're living, you're like, why, why does it feel like the fight comes to me? Like, all I'm trying to do is, like, ha have a godly marriage. All I'm trying to do is raise a godly family. All I'm trying to do, God, is to do your word. But why does it feel like the fight comes to me all the time? And I'm telling you because when you start to walk for God, and I want you to hear me, please hear me, hear me clearly, is it's not because you're doing something wrong that you're in a fight, but as a believer, it's what you're doing right causes a fight. Who am I talking to this morning? Who am I talking to this morning that has been living for God and saying, God, why am I dealing with this? That you realize, man, God, I'm trying to honor you. Man, I'm going to church, and, 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 and I'm listening, you know, to, to, I'm going to church at a Regal Theater. Lord, what's really happening, you know? And God, I, I paid my tithe, and Lord, and why am I dealing with this? I just want to encourage you that it's not what you're doing wrong that is causing a fight, but it's what you're doing right that causes a fight. Because when you start to live for God, when you start to establish his kingdom, when you start to try to break generational strongholds, come on, somebody, how many know you're going to have to fight? Tell your neighbor, say, I will fight. Deliverance is free, but your destiny will cost you. Salvation is free. God says you're saved. But Philippians says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. What does that mean? It doesn't say work for. It says work out. Does that make sense? Let me make it a sense like this. Your body, you didn't pay anything for your body. But if you want to get in shape, I don't know, you got to work out. It's going to cost you. Come on, somebody, right? All right. He says salvation is free, but work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Just like your body has a capacity to do some amazing things, right? But in order for that body to do some amazing things, you got to begin to pay the price or pay the cost to do something amazing with it, right? Does that make sense? Salvation is an amazing thing. But if you want to take that salvation and do something amazing with the salvation that God, that God gave you, somebody who's with me this morning... Tell your neighbor, I will fight. Now, now, Goliath, Goliath, the scripture begins to talk about Goliath, and it paints all that Goliath is. But I want to give you your first point here, and I want you to fill this in. What is the answer to Goliath? What is the answer to Goliath? Here's the answer to Goliath, and I want you to write this in. Is having a mentality, because David had this mentality, and this is what he had, is that, point number one, God has chosen me, and I want you to write your name right there. God has chosen me, and write your name, Fred, Tom, Sally, Susie. Write your name for such a time as this. I want you to write your name. When I wrote this point, I actually had put, God has chosen you, but then I go, I don't want anybody to go home after church and be like, what was church about? God has chosen you. You didn't go to church. <laughs> no, 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 come on, somebody, right? <laughs> Someone say, God has chosen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, God has chosen me. For such a time as this. God has chosen me. God has chosen you. God is, what is the answer to Goliath? You. Some of you are like, person behind me? Who are you talking to, Pastor? Come on. In the Old Testament, follow me here, because I want to paint this picture for you. In the Old Testament, the battle was a physical battle. And you saw the nation of Israel tried to take territory, and they were, you hear different campaigns, you read the Old Testament, you see all these wars. It was a physical battle because it was a physical kingdom. In the New Testament, the battle is a spiritual battle because God, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Now he has come to establish rulership, not in a physical kingdom, but rulership over the king, who's king of your heart. Because how many know that you can say, I have a kingdom, or you're a part of the kingdom, but he's not really the Lord of your life. God says, I have come now to establish a spiritual kingdom. Somebody say amen. 
And so now it's a spiritual thing that we're in, but the answer to the spiritual Goliaths we're dealing with, the answer to the Goliath uh, 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 things that we're dealing with is a people believing that I have been chosen for such a time as this, that God's answer to this dark world is seven billion people who are alive today, that if the seven billion people get a revelation that they have come from God, they have been designed by a maker, that they are not here by accident. You did not evolve from a guppy, and you did not evolve from a monkey. You did not come on somebody, but you were designed by God, and you have a destiny. You have a calling. You have a purpose. You, come on, you have a gift, and you have an authority. Tell your neighbor, God chose me. Tell two people, God chose me. Come on, two people, God chose me. Tell them, God chose me. God chose me. God chose me. God chose you for such a time as this. He chose you for such a time as this. We're we're the answer. The church is the answer. Now, I want to read this here. Let me go to the text, because if not, I'll start going bunny trails. Focus. Come on, somebody say focus. Somebody say focus. All right. All right. 1 Samuel 17, 12. The Bible says, Now David was the son of the Ephratite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons, and in Saul's time, he was very old. Now, I want you to stay here. The scriptures in 1 Samuel 17, let's, 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 let, let, let's, let's speak context. 1 Samuel 17, it starts with the Philistines, and then it begins, to, it begins to describe who Goliath is. And it says Goliath was, you know, six cubics tall. And it says Goliath was a champion. And, it's, you know, he was a Goliath. The name the ch- champion means he has defeated other people before. His name Goliath means splendid. Goliath in the Hebrew means splendid one. He was big. And the Bible describes all of this kind of Goliath's pedigree. He wore six pieces of armor and his, and his, his spear weighed 600 shekels. And we know that, that as I so, showed you last week, that Goliath is a picture of our eternal enemy Satan because because the Bible says he stood six cubics tall he he had six pieces of armor and his and his spear war weighed 600 shekels you get that six cubics tall six pieces of armor 600 shekels six 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 because Goliath is a picture of the enemy that we fight. It is a picture of Satan. And we are still fighting Goliath of things in our day and culture today that are Goliath of principalities, Goliath of thoughts, Goliath of situations, Goliath of temptations, Goliath of influence. Come on, somebody. And so the Bible talks all about Goliath, but then it says, now David. Someone say, now David. Now David was. Now, this is, this is awesome because... It says, this is who Goliath was, but then it starts to describe who David is. And, and, and this is great. Because it's like, David was the son of Jesse from Bethlehem. It's like, let me tell you a little bit about David. David, he was a nobody. Goliath is his champion. David was a nobody. David was from Bethlehem. Bethlehem is just a small town in Nazareth. We know Jesus was born there later in time, but Bethlehem, I've had the privilege of being in Israel and being in Bethlehem. It's just a small town. Even to this day, it's just all dirt, and it's like this nothing. It's just Bethlehem. Yeah. It's Bethlehem. He's like, David was from Bethlehem. Then the Bible goes further and says, oh, and by the way, uh, David had seven older brothers. He was the youngest of eight. How many young, how many, like, the, you're the youngest sibling. If you're in this place, lift your hand. Let's just all pray for him. Father, we pray for them right now for all the difficult things and the hand-me-down clothes and the beat-ups and the <laughs> seven brothers. Pray for my little brother, Daryl. He's the one that's playing guitar. He had four older brothers. Poor kid. Lord Jesus, we just pray. So let me tell you about David. He was the youngest of eight. So not only was he from a small town, he was the kid brother. And not only that, but if you actually read further, the reason why David was never invited to the anointing when Samuel came to say, one of your sons, Jesse, is going to be next king is because it was believed that David was from an illegitimate marriage. And so his job was to be take care of the sheep dung. And he was out there. It would be equivalent as today being the person who just, you know, uh, picks up trash or just, it just you're out there and you're just, you're kind of our Cinderella. You do what none of us want to do. You're just out there. 
And da- that's who David was. And God's breaking this down saying, oh, let me, you know, you, you all know Goliath is big and bad. Well, let me tell you who David was and who he wasn't. And the Bible sends a prophet to tell David who he is. And let me just speak to someone for a second. Whether you're here listening to this on podcast or maybe watching this on our television program, I just want to tell someone, whoever needs to hear this, maybe your family has not seen what God has put inside of you, but the Lord has sent a prophet. He has sent a man of God to say you have been chosen you have been set apart you have been come on somebody appointed for such a time as this if you believe it give God a clap and tell three people God chose me God chose me God chose me no he didn't yes he did he said now David this is powerful stuff guys David his family didn't even see it in him get out of here but the man of God saw it in him. You've been chosen. In your, in, your, in your notes, the Bible says that God adopted us. In Galatians chapter 4, it says that he adopted us as his own. Did you know God adopted you? Do you know what the difference is? Is that when adoption versus just having a child is adoption, you choose the child. You don't adopt by accident. Stay with me. Adopt means that you, God said, I want you. God chose you. you. You need to hear this this morning because some of you, you're not an accident. You know, my parents said, you know, they didn't plan me. And then I just, man, I don't, come on, somebody. <laughs> they were like, then you showed up. <laughs> no. The Bible says God knew you. You're a child of eternity. <laughs> Can I go here? Yeah. Your parents were simply conduits of what God had predestined in eternity. You are a child of eternity. Do you know what has gone into you being here right now? Do you know what has gone into your life being here right now? Do you know what all the events that took place to put you here right at this very moment? You could be anywhere. But God says, you're right here. You're a child of eternity. You're a child of destiny. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you're destiny's child. No, come on, somebody. No, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Jesus, come on. You're like, what song is that? I don't know, Pastor. I just listen to worship music. Come on, hey. <laughs> tell your neighbor, you're a child of destiny. Go ahead and tell him, you're destiny's child. Come on. God has set you apart. And I just, come on, let me talk to somebody because I I know this about you because I know this about me, is you will faith Goliath of situations and you will wonder, God, have you forgot about me? Look what's in front of me. Look what's screaming at me. Look what I'm dealing with. God, you didn't choose me. You forgot about me. But I come to flip the script that what was intended to harm you, God is going to turn around for good. And you are the solution that God has chosen. God is has chosen his church. God has chosen the body of Christ. God has chosen, come on, his disciples, his followers, his Davids and his Davinas to be nation changers, to be generation changers, to be destiny makers, to be legacy. Come on, somebody, say amen. If you believe that today, give God a clap and say, I'm a child of destiny. <laughs> Tell two people, God chose you. Tell them again. You're going to keep bugging them all service line. Be like, stop telling me that. God chose you. So, so, so God chose us, but God chose David. David, now David. So he's like, here's Goliath, but let me tell you about David. But here's the second thing. Write this in. Now we have a decision to make. God chose us, but now we have a choice to make. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Oh, it's settled. God chose you. You can't, the Bible says the gift of God is irrevocable. You can't run from God. Hey, well, I pray that message blessed you and it spoke to you. We're all out of time. We're not out of message, but we're going to continue this part two next time that we're together. I want you to tune in about how God has chosen to choose you. 
You know, the Bible says that after he got finished talking about Goliath, how big he was and how tall he was and how strong he was, how God says, I love it when he says, now David. And I believe that what the story has been written to this day of the difficulties that you're facing about how much you're going through, what you're, what's in front of you and what's, what's coming against you, I believe the story is about to change and now is your time to rise up. You see, whatever's in front of you, the Bible tells us greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That whatever's coming against you, what's inside of you, the power of the Holy Spirit, God is gonna give you the strength to overcome it. Hey, I pray today's message again has got you that much closer to the heart of God because I believe God is looking to raise you up to be a person after his heart who will do not some of his will, but all of his will. Hey, as always, we love to thank all of our generous supporters. It's because of people that are generous like you that allow us to take this message all over the world. We thank you for sowing into this ministry. But if you'd like to be a part of what God is doing here and you'd like to give a generous gift, you can do that by visiting our website at freedomhouseoc.org or you can also mail in a seed into this ministry to allow us to water the world with this word of God. Hey, as always, if you're ever in the area, in the Orange County area, we'd love for you to come visit one of our services at 9 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. We'd love to meet you in person and be able to worship our Lord and Savior with you. Hey, the last thing I'll say is this. If you find yourself far from the heart of God, the way to get close to the heart of God is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You see, the Bible tells that Jesus died on the cross to wash away all of our sins, to give us a fresh start. Today, if you need that fresh start, I just want you to say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, change my life, and make it new. Hey, if you said that prayer and you meant it, listen, the Bible says old things pass away and everything is brand new. Today is a fresh start for you. Welcome to the family of God. Hey, as always, we love you. And remember, go after the heart of God. We'll see you next week.